Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and this week we're going to do something about filling these big holes in the side of the Ferrari. Okay, so I know some of you have been wondering where Archie has been. You haven't seen uh, Archie on the channel for a while, and that's pretty much because I haven't been driving it. It's, um, it's really wasted sitting in the garage. So some of you might be upset to know that I am actually selling Archie. So Archie is a nice, clean 996 manual coupe with a good history, but not all of the cars on the market out there are, and that brings us to today's uh, video sponsor, which is Car Vertical. Car Vertical is actually a site that uh, more than likely is running in whatever country you are watching from at the moment and it's actually a really good tool to check and see a car's history and, um, and see what sort of condition it's in. Let me give you an example of one of Car Vertical's reports here and, uh, and what you're actually getting when you have a look at it. This uh, 911 was uh, recently for sale and you can sort of see here that the mileage um, is a nice green tick, hasn't been stolen, uh, hasn't been used as a taxi, but it does have a report that this car has been in an accident and was previously damaged. And if you follow down through the report, you can actually sort of see some of the checks that were done, this stolen vehicle check in a bunch of different countries, and there's no reports of this particular vehicle being stolen. You can see here the mileage going up in a nice consistent uh, manner that matches in with the vehicle that all looks uh, above board. Uh, and then going down further, you can see in the damage report, it does actually show that this car had been damaged and also shows the areas in which it might have been damaged. And um, in this report, if you actually keep going down to the bottom, you can actually have a look at pictures of what the car looked like when it was damaged. And if you were looking at a nice shiny car, uh, you might be surprised to come across something like this. So it is always good to give yourself a bit of a uh, heads up of what you're looking at and, uh, and the history. And if you're still interested in a car like this, it might give you some bargaining power. So check the guys out, Car Vertical. I don't normally do ads, but uh, they're really helping out the channel. And uh, I think it's a, uh, a handy little addition to any of you car buyers out there. So check them out, Car Vertical, and uh, let's get on with the rest of the video. All right, guys, welcome back. And those of you who've been watching the last uh, few weeks on the Alfa Ferrari will have seen that I've been getting the body panels perfectly lined up. Uh, I did the boot a couple of weeks ago. I did the bonnet last week. If you missed it, I'll put a link up above so you can catch up and think about subscribing. It does help us out. So this week, uh, we are moving on to the last panels on the car, which is both doors. Now, I've sort of left these to last because I know they're gonna take a bit of tweaking. The, um, I'll show you through a little bit more when we, uh, we start getting closer, but um, to start with, I think it's time to uh, put the uh, door rubbers back on again and uh, start bolting the doors up roughly in place. And then we'll start tweaking and seeing what we can do about getting them perfectly lined up. All right, so I just spent a while then going through and uh, reinstalling the rubber mounting strips that uh, go on the inside of the car. Needed to drill a few more holes in the places where I've done repairs, uh, and that is, uh, is all there. And I noticed another piece that I missed, which is there's a little chunk missing of the drip rail right here. So before I go any further, it's back to welding and grinding. You know the deal. Let's cut it out, weld in the strip, tidy it up. <laughs> All right, well, the rubber is in all the way around. My thumbs are killing me. It's, uh, um, 
it could sink quite nicely, but it's sort of quite an effort and sort of even trying to use a tool, it's it's easier just using your fingers, but uh, yeah, painful. Anyway, let's start bolting the door on and see how we go lining everything up and uh, initially uh, where we're at. Okay, so we have the door back bolted on, but we still have lots of alignment issues. Now, the bottom of this uh, guard, I still haven't welded on. I deliberately left that off because I want to be able to be able to manipulate it to get these panel gaps and the alignment all perfect. Um, also with the skin, this skin has not actually been um, spot welded along the top here, so it's still loose. And it brings me to the adjustment of these doors. Now these alphas, the doors are particularly tricky to get the adjustment just right. Because if you want to bring this top level in or out, or this bottom level in or out, normally you could just adjust the bolting spot inside the door. You can on the bottom, but I'll show you the issue when you do it on the top. As you can see, the bolting point for the lower hinge is at 90 degrees to the door jam. So you can bring that bottom edge in or out as you see fit, in or out, up or down, and that's all pretty straightforward. The top hinge is more like on about a 30 degree angle. So the issue you find is to move that gap in and out. If you bring it in, it also brings the hinge point back and it might not seem like much at all at this end, but that actually, transmits through to the door so that if you bring that hinge in it drops this part of the door down so it, it, it lowers this end of the door because it brings the pivot back a little bit closer and it pivots it down you and vice versa if you move the hinge out um, to get this sort of pulling out and sitting more flush here the the hinge actually goes back that way a little bit as well which in essence actually lifts this end of the door up so it's a real balancing act of switching between um, in and out, up and down, and, uh, and also the, I've got a bunch of shims made up, which is what uh, they, often, they usually use on these things. Um, and different thickness shims in behind here can then adjust things a little bit more. So it's a lot of backwards and forwards trying to get things lined up nicely. And at the moment you can see here, this is actually sitting um, the door sitting a bit low here, uh, coming through, it's, uh, it's actually about even here. It's high here, and it's very high at the bottom. You can see the door is sitting out quite a bit. So the door has a twist on it that I'm gonna have to try and get out, uh, because this end sits quite, uh, quite good here. Um, the panel gap's a bit tight along here, but as we get up, um, it's, it's pretty good here, and this alignment is all reasonable. This could probably go in, this top of the door could probably go in just a little bit, but again, that going in is gonna bring this hinge point down, and it just alters everything. So you can see here I'm hammering onto a block of wood to help bend that bottom edge of the door in nice and evenly without actually dam damaging or denting the door. Well, I've been working away. I just uh, spot welded the top of the door. I love having a spot welder. It makes life so much easier than trying to do plug welds or whatever. It's just quick and easy. Um, the, uh, the bottom of the door is still not quite right, so I'm still tweaking, uh, but I found I was chasing my tail because this outer skin, not being welded to the inner, 
just meant every time I tried to twist it, it just sort of spring back and it just wasn't, uh, it wasn't liking it. So what I'm gonna do now, moving forward, is um, I wanna still twist this door a little bit more. It's sitting in a little bit too much there, out a little bit too much here, whereas at this end, it's, it's good. So that's telling me that the door is slightly twisted. So the way to untwist it, like you might have seen me doing earlier, is to put a, uh, a block of wood in, in the top because I want to twist the bottom in and physically just wrestling with the door and physically twisting it. And even that, just little tweak there, uh, got me on my way. So uh, a bit more of that and we'll hopefully have a door that fits. So you can see me here checking the level of the door with a straight edge, making sure everything's nice and level. And then I use a spacer to find any unevenness in the panel gaps. And here I'm using a hammer and dolly just to get that perfect alignment here in the corner where the door meets the front guard. So on this end, straight edge again. It's looking really nice all the way down. And um, with the panel gap, we've got a nice even panel gap all the way along the bottom. That I'm nice and happy with. The top portion, this is really nice along here. But then um, this top part of the door is okay. And then we get to this little bit in the middle here and it's just a little bit tight. We're good down the bottom. So just this bit in the middle. So I'm gonna get the hammer and dolly out now and I'm just going to try and hammer that edge in a little bit and just um, get it nice and flat and even with the hammer and dolly and see if we can open that panel gap up just a smidge. So you can see here I'm using a combination of a panel hammer, slide hammer, and pretty much anything I can use to push and pull and manipulate the door so the panel gap is lining up exactly the way I want it and keeping it nice and even. All right, so that panel gap is looking so much nicer. We've got a nice, even panel gap all the way up except for this little bit in the corner here where um, it's got the crease and it's folded over. So I'm going to uh, weld this up and get that uh, bit of weld in here to just tighten that gap up and make it nice, perfect gap all the way through. All right, well, I still need to tidy up just the inside of this uh, forward edge of the door a little bit more before I start my welding. And one of the uh, tips that one of you guys gave, which I actually think is not a bad one, is now that I have my hinges exactly where I want them, you want to be able to put them on exactly in the same spot every time. Now, this takes a long time to get these lined up and it's a lot of playing around. So what I'm going to do is, um, is actually drill a very small hole. Um, I'll probably do it in the middle of the hinge and uh, just enough so that I can put the, uh, the bottom end of a rivet through just so that I can line it up again. When I put them back on there, I can put the rivet in, make sure it's in the exact right spot before I tighten them up. I should be able to get the doors on and off again exactly the same each time. But only drill it once they're perfect. So you can see here, I'm actually closing up the panel gap by MIG welding a bead of weld along the edge of the door. All right, so you can see here that I've gone through and welded up this gap and made a much, much better uh, panel gap all the way along. And it was a little bit low in the top here. So I'm just tightening the panel gap up. I'm just looking here. Um, I might add a little bit more in this corner here as well to sort of tighten that up. But that's made it much neater. I still need a grinder and it's warped the, uh, the, the door a little bit. I can just tweak that back into shape. And uh, that is going to be much nicer to get a nice even panel gap everywhere I want it.
So after grinding the surface back with a flat disc, I go back with the side of the cutting disc to get a nice flat, even panel gap all the way along. Well, that was a whole day of work, but I have and in the door perfectly flat. It's nice and level all the way down, nice and even. I've got a beautiful panel gap all the way around the edge now. Um, welding it out really makes it nice and just grinding it back a little bit. And we have perfect panel gaps all the way around, all the way up the sides. That is what we want. We want a nice, flat, beautiful door with the, uh, the line, the body lines all lining up. That looks great. So now it's time to do it all over again on the passenger side. So you can see here we've got a really tight panel gap here in the corner then it opens up a bit more it's a bit open there following down it's a nice neat panel gap all the way down that side of the door and along the bottom coming up the other side uh, it's nice and neat up till about this point here when it gets a little bit open again so let's start welding And there we go, we have a nice even panel gap all the way down this side, all the way along the bottom of the car, up the other side, it's all beautiful. And then this top edge here, this is all nice and neat and even now. So we have beautiful panel gaps. Uh, the lines have run perfectly straight all the way along the car. Um, this all nice and level and smooth. I am very, very happy with that. Um, I was worried it was going to be a lot more difficult and I suppose it's taken me a couple of days to do this, but we are good. All the panels are done on the car. Yes. And with that, the car is done. All the panels at least are all done. They're all the way I need it. Everything fits the way they're supposed to. All the fabrication is done. All the modifications are done, at least for now, which means, <sighs> The bodywork is finished, the metalwork side is finished. Next week, we can actually start having a look at the um, uh, rust treatment and getting rid of some of the flash rust that's on the back and things like that. Uh, and uh, start getting ready to put some paint on the car, or at least some epoxy primer. I'm so excited, but uh, that, anyway, we're gonna have to leave it for this week. And um, I think that means it's time for fun facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys, after the 1967, 24 hours of Le Mans, the FIA announced a rule change. Prototypes were now limited to three litres, unless they produced a minimum of 25 cars, in which case the limit was five litres. Enzo Ferrari believed this was blatant favouritism to Porsche and decided to boycott the 1968 sports car season. He then decided to rejoin the World Sports Car Championship in 1969 with a new three litre prototype, the 312P. This was basically Ferrari's 312 Formula 1 car with a sports car body on top. This was powered by a detuned version of the Formula 1 3 litre V12, making only 16 horsepower less at 420 horsepower at 9,800 revs per minute. The car debuted in 1969 at the 24 Hours of Sebring with Mario Andretti at the wheel. 
and it proved to be blistering really quick straight out of the box and finished second overall. The next week, the car was taken to Le Mans test by Porsche where it revealed its new prototype, the 917, which would go on to become the fastest two-seat racing car ever built. This prompted Ferrari to go back and then enclose the cabin of the 312P for better aerodynamics. But the writing was on the wall and Ferrari knew that it needed to develop something in the 5 litre category to have a better chance at competing against the Porsches. Alright, we're done! The, uh, the bodywork is done, all the panels are lined up nicely, the doors are all good, the bonnet, the boot, the whole thing is good and I am so excited that next week I finally start doing the uh, rust conversion and possibly even get some primer on the car. Oh, it's going to be so good seeing it all one colour. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's coming. It's still, my, it's still a little bit of work to, to get it there, but uh, making sure everything's right. But I'm excited to have the banging end. Oh, I think the banging has finished. That was Today was <sighs> The last loud, of it. But I think we're, we're done. The car is pretty much where it needs to be. The body work is, the, or the modifications at least, are done. Yay! Yay! <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm so... <laughs> we all are. Oh. Oh, still a while to get before it gets on the road yet, but uh, we're, we're, we're chipping away at it and uh, oh, I'm excited to reveal the paint colours and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So, um, yeah, anyway. Okay, stay tuned, see what happens. Yep. Um, as always, like, subscribe, and if you want to follow the videos a day early, Patreon, no ads, and to, yeah. And to that see some tips and tricks yeah. and stuff, or, or things that are happening at ahead of time you can also check us out on facebook and instagram all right guys have a good one hey guys immediately there don't put that on the leg hi guys immediately after the 1967 mr seems to be speaking properly <laughs> hi guys my mouth feels all rubbery i think because i've been sitting and just staring at the screen so long today the brand new prototype which was known as the 315p 312p, so close. I just, at that point, I was just winging it and I'm like, <laughs> I've got like a chance. You're so close. <laughs> I'm just going to say what just what. He then decided to rejoin the world cast shortly there. Three litre V12, making only 12. 16. At 480 horsepower. 420. <sighs> mm. 24. God, how many 24 hour races are there? Lots. Don't answer that.